uh, Bill asked you during the week just how many plays you have that are just Jackson plays, and you said a lot. <laughs> and it, it seemed like you were getting really creative there in that second quarter with some of the play calls. Uh, how quickly have you gotten comfortable being able to be creative when you haven't had Jackson in the lineup? Well, <clears throat> it all starts with the running game. Um, and, you know, when, when you're running the ball well, then it certainly opens up a lot of different things. And I give our offensive staff a lot of credit. And it uh, starts off with Kevin Wilson. You know, Kevin Wilson is one of the best offensive minds in college football and uh, continues to come up with great game plans in that meeting room with, with Brian Hartline and Tony Alford. Um, you know, you think about some of the guys we have in that room, um, you know, Justin Fry. I mean, uh, you know, we got some really – bright minds in there. So you go in there and you just come up with different ideas and the best idea wins. But, uh, but it all starts with the physicality up front and running the football uh, effectively. And that opens up everything else. Uh, over to the left, Austin Ward, Rivals 97.1. Ryan, you mentioned throughout the week how much respect you have for Michigan State's program. And then the, I guess, quote unquote, new challenge of going on the road, at least for this season, to yep. handle your business as relatively quickly as you all did in the first half. What does it mean? What does it say to you about this team? Well, uh, it didn't. Um, exactly start the way we wanted it on offense, you know, and you know, it did, nobody panicked at all. Um, I thought the way the defense played, you know, Lathan got the early interception and just across the board, you know, we gave up a couple things on the outside and a couple penalties. But after, after that, and you look at it, you know, they, they, they did a great job of, um, you know, stopping the run. Um, I thought defensive line was strong. Uh, Tommy and the linebackers were excellent. You know, just across the board, um, our guys, um, you know, just played strong. And that, when you have um, you know, that type of uh, back and forth and that balance on offense and defense and they play against each other, you can see what we did there in the first half. And I thought you know, for the first half of that third quarter as well and even maybe into the, the end of that third quarter, um, I just think overall we played, we played good football on the road. Um, certainly not perfect. And then it got a little sloppy in the fourth quarter, but you know, we just wanted to get some guys out of the game and make sure that we got to the bye week um, as healthy as we could. Uh, looking forward to getting to the bye week, looking forward to getting guys healthy and reflecting on the things that we did well in the first six games, but also projecting where we need to be and where we need to go. So uh, great to get this win on the road and, and get into the bye week. Uh, over to the right, Cameron T. Robinson, the athletic. Ryan, I was just kind of thoughts on Travion's day, getting back into the lineup, and then he looked like he got banged up in that third quarter. Yeah, um, you know, we, we um, if it was a different game, he probably would have come back in. Uh, just out of abundance of caution, we just decided to hold him out. We didn't feel like we needed to use him at that point. Um, but but I thought he ran well. You know, 19 carries, 119 yards. I thought he ran hard. Um, you know, I thought again the offensive line played strong. Tight ends again. Uh, you know, times unsung heroes. I mean, these guys are are working really hard on the edge. And, and Cade is is just a really good football player. Um, but but Trey ran hard today. It was good to see him back after after last week. Uh, over to the left, Bill Landis, rivals. Ryan, you guys are. I don't know if you can be more efficient maybe than you've been with the first team offense in there the last few weeks, but. You're doing this without a full deck. You've had Trey out a little bit. You had Mayan out today. You've not had Jackson, really. Have you thought to yourself over the last four weeks, like, man, this looks really good, but I wonder what this could be when we actually have all of our pieces and we're kind of at 100%? Yeah, sometimes. But but also, I, I feel like, you know, it's rare in today's day and age where you are, you do have a full deck, you know, just the way the game's played. You know, it's typically you have to play depth, and we know that. And, you know, like when we talk about it in the preseason, like who's your tailback going to be? And we always say, you're going to need two. I don't know how it's going to shake up, but we're going to need two. How about a receiver? We're going to need five. We, we just know we're going to need this many guys because things happen. Um, but it is exciting to know that, you know, if we can get everybody uh, back in there, then, you know, at full strength, then, you know, certainly we can put a lot of stress on defenses. Was Mayan getting kind of a maintenance day and your new running back, Xavier Johnson? I thought, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, we tried to be a little creative going into this game um, with some of the things that we did and, and uh, held some things, but, but um, you know, tried to do a couple different. And I thought Xavier uh, ran the ball hard. I mean, he did a nice job on some of those runs. Um, he's a weapon for us. You know, you saw it in the Notre Dame game. You could see it today. He's a good player. Um, but, but across the board, I thought that unit played well today. You know, obviously, Marvin made some amazing catches. But Emeka plays tough. You know, he catches the ball, he and Julian over the middle, and takes some of those shots, but keeps going. Um, Warriors. And uh, I'm proud of the way those guys played. Uh, over to the middle, uh, Tim May, uh, left and roll. Yeah, it's close enough. Hey, uh, Ryan, uh, you had a great view of the dime that uh, CJ dropped in on Marvin Harrison Jr. there on the sideline. And stuff, and yeah. just you know, I know we're always asking you about CJ and his play, but I mean, today he was, with the exception of one pass, and yep. and by the way, whose fault was that? But then number two, uh, uh, he was he seemed to be quite on. 
Well, um, yeah, it was a little bit of a miscommunication there. Um, I, I could have done a better job helping the two of them, but I thought the best thing was it was like nothing ever happened. We just kept rolling, and and that shows confidence and, and uh, proud of those guys the way that they played. But yeah, that was a tremendous catch by Marvin. I mean, I was amazed. It was like he jumped up and caught it by his ankles. I mean, it was just an acrobatic catch by just a tremendously talented player. Um, so it was fun to watch him out there. And and then, yeah, I mean. What can you say about somebody who's throwing the ball like that in 20 mile an hour wind? At least it seemed like it was. I mean, it was blowing it a couple of times, and uh, for him to throw it that accurately, um, that was that was really well done on the road, um, and uh, you know, it just was clicking. You know, you could see the timing. He was able to step in the pocket. A big part of that is the protection. Our, our offensive line uh, did a good job giving him a good pocket, and when you do that, you know, he can he can do some damage. And uh, I thought he embraced the game plan, worked it. Um, had a good thought process the whole game, had a good look in his eye, you know, to throw, you know, was he 21 to 26? Is that with a 361 and six touchdowns? That's one heck of a day on the road. So, um, especially, you know, at a program as proud as Michigan State and coming in here as our first road game, um, you know, big day for CJ. Joe Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Your defense is obviously playing very well. The one issue you guys have is the cornerback play. How concerned are you? You pulled Cam out of the game at one point. We're talking to him. Can you share what you shared with him? And how big a concern is that for you? Well, uh, you know, again, I keep looking at it, and, and we're there. We just don't seem to be making the plays. So we we got to figure that part of it out. I think if it's something where you know guys just are are just creating separation, we can't cover anybody. That's one issue. This issue seems to be that we're there. We're just not quite making the play. So we got to address it. I, I know we can do that. I, I know we can. We we have the right guys over there, and uh, they're pressing a little bit, but that's okay. And they're doing some really good things. Um, so just, you know, he's, he's very competitive and, you know, he wants to, um, you know, be great and be the best corner in the country. And so, you know, he's a little frustrated. Just got to calm down and play with emotion. Don't let emotion play with you and get yourself back on track. But, um, but overall, I think our defense is playing very, very well. Like you said, I think Tommy's playing at a high level. The D line's playing. The safety play has been excellent. I think Ronnie Hickman has been a really good leader for us. Tommy's shown good leadership. And I think when you talk about winning on the road, leadership has to show up. Veteran guys have to play veteran. And uh, it looked like, you know, I have to watch the film, but it looked like that happened today. Uh, yeah. Over to the uh, middle, Rob Oliver, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, you're winning by four plus touchdowns. It feels like rinse and repeat. And from this side, it's almost like nitpicking to pick apart. Uh, is, it, is that fair to nitpick this team, to look at the cornerbacks? And do you nitpick behind the scenes, say, going forward? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's a good thing. You know, it, it, we get a little defensive because, you know, it, it seems nitpicky at times. But you know what? We want to be the best in the country. That's our goal. And, and we want to challenge to be the best in the country. So, yeah, like we have to figure out how we can get better in different areas. And, and um, you know, we're not just going to sit here and say, oh, it was a great game. We're, we're good. No, we're not. No, we have to keep building and keep growing. And that's the point that we have to make sure that we address here during the bye week. OK, here's what we did these are the past six games. They don't mean a thing moving forward. Um, I think you can see what we're capable of, and that's exciting. But any given Saturday, anything can happen. And I'm not sure what happened today in college football, but I'm sure there were some crazy things. I don't, I don't know. But um, you know, these guys are still 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old players. And uh, the competitive stamina is the angle that we've been taking, just to bring it every single week. And um, I think you're seeing some of that. I'd have a few questions for Emeka if I was a reporter. We've got Tony Gerdman, Buckeye Huddle, and I'm going to bring Tommy Eichenberg up up here to sit at the far left. Let's do a couple questions for a couple more for Coach Day, and then we'll uh, we'll open it up for, for Tommy. Ryan, do you are you still able to be surprised by some of the catches Marvin makes, and what did you think of that last touchdown catch? Yeah, I, I was surprised. I think maybe if they saw my face on camera, I was like, "What was that? Um, that was that was a tremendous catch." That um, we do see things in practice, but um, that was special. Uh, over here in the middle, Dan Hope, eleven Warriors. Yeah, Ryan, just to follow up on Travion, it seemed like he was running with a little bit of an extra edge there in that first half. Did you see some extra fire yeah. from him this week after not being able to play last week? Yeah, I don't know if that's what it was, but I, I saw it too. I thought he was running hard. He was running physical. He was finishing runs. Um, yeah, you, you could see that. He had, he had a bounce in his step, and he was, he was uh, running determined. Yeah. Ryan, you got a lot of guys who make spectacular catches, but this isn't just today. It just doesn't seem like your receivers drop Ooh. many balls. And I don't, I know it's knock on wood if you want, but I don't know. Does that, 
is that true? How important is that that it seems like also you guys make the routine catches almost all the time? Well, I, I think you just you get into a rhythm of the game. And then, you know, like, for instance, we, we had the early uh, turnover and, and nobody, nobody batted an eye. You know, I think if something like that were to happen in a game, we just keep rolling, you know. Um, I just think we, that's the way we practice. And we have a certain level of expectation of, um, you know, efficiency. And if it doesn't happen, we're surprised. But when it does, we don't, we don't th uh, fret over it. You know, we just kind of move on and um, go from there. Um, but I think the confidence is the most important thing in the pass game. OK, we're going to go one more for Coach Day over here. Uh, uh, Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. Justin, do you need one for Coach? OK, please. Brian, you used that term, like stressing defenses. When it came to Marvin uh, as, a, as a prospect and then now, I guess, how did you see yourself someday being able to stress defenses with him and then how is he surpassing that or is he doing it in different ways than you expected well I don't want to embarrass him because he's sitting right here but um, I'm going to anyways maybe he won't like this but you know it's it's a um, is it Friday or Thursday you know I'm just walking through the facility and he's out there on the jugs with Reach Stockdale going through I think the script of practice and the game plan in the facility by himself, just going through it over and over and over again. I think you ask anybody on our team, they say, oh, there's Marvin again working by himself. So this isn't something, he's been blessed with a lot of gifts and talent, but he has unbelievable discipline and skill. And when you take a tremendous amount of talent and mix it with discipline and skill, that's what you're seeing right there. And um, you know, did we see all of that in recruiting? We saw some of it, but the rest of it uh, you know, is a credit to him as a person and his work ethic. Coach, thank you very yep. much. Okay.